my name is Alex. I am an assistant director of admissions at Rensselaer Polytechnic Institute. I am with you today to give you some insider information about the college admissions process, but also just to answer your questions, tell you a little bit about myself, about our PI, and hopefully make this process a little less stressful than it usually feels. Like I said, I'm Alex. I am originally from central New York, grew up in a small town, came out to this area about 10 years ago, and in 2013 I graduated from Siena College, which is right in this area. I grew up as a competitive swimmer, I grew up as a trumpet player, band person, um, I now spend a lot of time hiking and reading and doing yoga, and I chose to work at RPI actually because I started here in student activities, just in a job, and I met some really interesting students and I found that the students here just had this passion and this intellect that I'd never seen anywhere else and I knew that this is the type of education that I could believe in and that I wanted other people to see the power of. I'm going to share a ton of information with you today, everything about RPI, about the admissions process. So if you have questions, I'm going to put a question sticker up so that you can ask them and I'll answer them throughout the day. Okay, we're back. So, when it comes to the types of students that we're looking for uh, to apply to RPI and students who've been accepted in the past, we're really looking for self-motivated, passionate, curious individuals. They're students who have a passion for learning, who share that passion for learning with others, and who really like to be challenged. So they're students who have worked hard in high school, have taken high level rigorous courses in high school where appropriate and where offered. We understand that not everyone is taking seven AP courses. In fact, that sounds miserable. Um, but we're looking for students who have really put a lot of effort into doing well in high school, while at the same time balancing that effort and that energy with it, being involved in their community, their school community, their local community, church community, national and world community. We're looking for students who really care not just about that A, that A+, plus, but also people who are seeing the world around them and contributing to it. Application review policy at RPI is a holistic one. That means that there's no one thing that is going to get a student accepted and no one thing that's going to get a student denied. You are more than just a number, more than just a test score, a GPA, you are a full human being. And we're really, really interested in figuring out who you are as a person, if you can be successful at RPI, if you are a good fit for RPI. And to do that, we do have to take into account a lot more than just one or two things. So a holistic review gives you a review as a human being, not just as a test score. So once you hit the submit button on your application, you send it off to us, I want to give you a little bit of insight about what happens for us. So first of all, we start a file for you. We get your application in our system, start a file for you, assign you 
a number, we call it your Rensselaer identification number. If you wind up being accepted and coming to RPI, that will be kind of the thing that identifies you as you go through your entire four years here. We also trigger an email to you, and that email gives you a link to your applicant portal. Most schools at this point have an applicant portal. They're the thing that lets you see what we have in our system and what we don't have in our system for you. So if we require a transcript, which we do, and we don't have it, there'll be a big red X. If we require a transcript and we do have it, your counselor sent it to us, there'll be a big green check mark. That is a space that you need to keep an eye on. It's a space that you should log into regularly, and it's a space that usually takes about two weeks of process time to update. So if you send us something, you know, today, it might not show up right today. Most things are pretty quick, but we do say usually give it about two weeks. That applicant portal is key. So we have a file and you can see what we have. The applicant portal is also really important because that's where we're going to post any, you know, new requirements. So mid-year grades, halfway through the year, it's where we're going to ultimately post your decision. So it's a really important thing. Make sure that you check your spam filters, make sure that you get that email, you log on, and you check it regularly. We can see when you've checked it, and it is really important to us for you to be honest and for you to be realistic about checking it and making sure that everything is in on time. For a lot of people, this is one of the first big responsibilities you have, you know, making sure that your entire application is complete. And your application needs to be complete because if it's not complete, we don't get to read it. So I don't see a file until every single piece of that application has a green check mark next to it. So it's super important to make sure that you have a chance of being admitted to a school to make sure that you have everything in and everything in on time. So speaking of documents, a lot of colleges require all different types of official documents, things like test scores, things like recommendation letters, like transcripts, and those do need to come usually as official things, and it varies by school. So when it comes to official documents, how do those wind up with us? At this point in 2019, most colleges are equipped to receive documents electronically. Many colleges receive documents through things like Naviance, which your school might use, Parchment, or SendEDU. If for some reason your school is unable to send things electronically to a college, most colleges do accept things like faxes, emails, and even mailed documents. Now the important thing is to make sure you know what your college can accept and how to get those things there. Now, when it's an official document, that does mean it has to come from the school, so usually your counselor would send it, but it's important to make sure that they know how they need to go about that. If they don't know, it's on you to reach out to the school. At RPI, after everything on that checklist I showed you earlier has a big green check mark next to it, that means that your application is ready to go, ready to be read by someone. So it'll get pushed automatically to the first person who's going to read it. While we're reading, we might decide that we need more information on you. Usually for us at RPI, that comes in the form of requesting mid-year grades to make sure that the senioritis hasn't completely set in and taken over your life. Asking for mid-year grades isn't a sign of something bad. Again, we just want to see how you're doing and make sure that you're maintaining your academic rigor and also your ability and your strengths in a rigorous curriculum. Once we've made a final decision, if you have been accepted, before you find out, we pass your file over to financial aid so that they can start considering you for need-based and merit-based aid. At RPI, merit-based aid, you're automatically considered for an application to us as an application for merit aid. For need-based aid, we require both the FAFSA and the CSS profile. Those have deadlines as well, which are listed on our website. Make sure to get those in if you're applying for need-based aid because we do require them in order actually be able to give you a package at the time of your decision. We are a school with deadlines and cutoffs for our applications and specific dates during which we release decisions. For regular decision this year, well technically next year, uh, our date for decisions is March 7th, 2020. The deadline for regular decision applications to be in is January 15th. When it comes to being waitlisted or denied, that's a tough pill to swallow, but I just wanted to let you know that that in no way indicates anything 
about you. It does not take away any of your self-worth. It is a part of this process. There will be rejections in life and they're not fun, but they're a part of it. But I just wanted to let you know, it usually is due to a variety of factors. One of the biggest ones is that no school can, get, can admit every single person. But also, for whatever reason, we found that you were not a perfect fit for the school. We don't want students to come here if they're not a perfect fit, because those are the types of students who decide that they don't want to be here once they get here. So we're looking out for your best interest, even though I'm sure, and I know because I was not accepted to colleges that I applied to as well, even though it does hurt, it's for the best. Hi everyone! Just wanted to come here and say thank you so much for having me today. Had a really wonderful time. I think we had a lot of really great questions, good conversations. I hope you learned something, but I also hope that this process kind of became a little less stressful and a little less scary for you. I'm going to leave our email address, so if you have any other questions you can feel to reach out. I will be checking our email tomorrow actually, so you'll probably hear back from me if you have more questions. Have a great night.